Зарастру спрашивает. Зарастру спрашивает. What are the effects For example, many years of consecutive celebration of the new year turn it into a ritual in some way, and this date acquires an energy potential as well as a sacred sense. In other words, multiple repetitions of a ritual and themes create some sort of a channel and give it a certain quality. By analogy, a prolonged demonization of the gods attributes a certain quality by ultimately incorporating them into the Christian egregor as an anti-force. This could also change their vibrational range. Baal is a vivid example of it. He is now being viewed as a demon by a broad part of consciousness, instead of a deity of the higher hierarchy. Question. What were the impacts of such demonization on the gods themselves, since in fact a lot of movies portray them as such, meaning that there is still a certain channel existing and supporting them? Does this type of feed, such an anti-worship, force them to change under the influence of the environment? How did this affect the possibility of contact between people and this God? And what would be better for them and the purity of their consciousness? To be absorbed by the opposite facet of a different channel or, on the contrary, to be forgotten for some time? Our colleague sent a very interesting and long question. Thank you very much, colleague Zarastro. We will try to discuss this topic. The gods, their minds, and the established cults represent multifaceted pools of information. They are extremely multi-layered and multi-level and are very difficult for mental comprehension. The gods were not affected by their demonization by the Abrahamic systems. It cannot affect them because there must be some type of relationship and interdependence between the Abrahamic cult and let's take the cult of Baal or the cult of Astarte or other gods of the same Semitic pantheon you already mentioned. Take the Slavic, Scandinavian or Celtic gods. Demonizing them was more difficult, because, well, it wouldn't stick, it didn't last. But when it comes to the Canaan and Semitic deities, they did undergo a significant demonization. Did this affect those gods? No, it didn't. They remained the same universe-scale minds as they used to be. But it highly affected the people who perceived them this way. The mind of people who captured this demonized component. So what is a demonized component? It is something that has severed the frequencies, cut off the frequencies of perception. And now this mind, the person who perceives, is not able to perceive the entirety but rather only a narrow range of frequencies. And this narrow range of frequencies, of course, is low vibrational in nature because they left the high vibrational frequencies for the god Yahweh, who himself is just a large-scale sentience as the other gods, who has just the same dark and light sides and numerous vibrational constituents. But the Abrahamic systems have shifted this vibrational range towards the higher perception, whereas the lower perception was left for the ancient gods. At the same time, they themselves have not changed, only the perception of them has changed. A pagan consciousness knows that right is good and left is bad, that light is good and darkness is bad. We also used to have such ridiculous dualism. This, in particular, was also used against us. Therefore, when such a force, a pagan force, that was demonized in Christianity, demonized in Abrahamism, gets in contact and is perceived by a human mind, the human mind will perceive it exclusively in that already prescripted frequency range permitted by the Abrahamic system that demonized these gods. Thus, if I live within the Judaic matrix, I will see Baal, but only in this narrow range of perception, through this Judaic matrix. I will perceive Baal as the one who eats babies, the horrible god with horns on top of his head and a blazing fire inside, completely merciless. 
Although legends and myths tell us that Baal simply means Lord, meaning he is the supreme god of the Ugaritic Canaan Semitic pantheon, who has a great number of names. No matter what pantheon you look at, there is always one god who has been identified as the supreme god for this particular period of evolution. Therefore, in its original meaning, Baal is a name that can be given to any supreme god because this word means lord or master, someone who is the most senior, the head of the house. But a person can see this because he is looking through such a matrix. The demonization via media, fiction, cinema, and prior to that there were grimoires, goetia, the books of Pope Honorius, and many other medieval treatises describing the demons. Although for some reason they describe them exclusively from a practical point of view as they apparently still could see a certain benefit. But this portrait description would make the human mind perceive them in an absolutely specific way. And at the same time, a huge number of practitioners with a consciousness that is free from the Judaic matrix, who interact with the same forces, somehow describe them in a completely different way. Go figure. That's why it all depends on the channel of perception of the actual human mind. Now, what about the gods in regard to such perception? Well, if they were human, it would probably seem disgusting to them. But since they're not human, the word disgusting is the wrong one to use. Perhaps ludicrous. At times unclear, sometimes inappropriate, indecent. But in any case, such a perception, those seeking themselves in magic, those who are searching for their gods in the ancient pagan pantheons, the first thing they need to do is to remove the Judaic matrix from their consciousness. Just take it out, get rid of it, because you will always see everything through it exactly the way our colleague Zarastro described. Try to start with the myths. They reveal more than the human pictures drawn by Hollywood. Although sometimes even Hollywood manages to show things not through a Judaic angle, but more often it is so. The Matrix does that for one simple reason. It needs to illuminate, whitewash those it needs to whitewash, and this means that someone else needs to be blackened. There is no other way. Without blackening or whitewashing anyone, then things begin to present themselves as they are, possessing the entirety of the informational capabilities, both light and dark, good and evil, tradition and anti-tradition, etc. The portrait images are not exactly false, no, they are true. They just show only one side of the truth. Those who interact with the forces their magical consciousness, especially the magical consciousness, is different because it is able to see all these faces simultaneously. A priest sees only the face that he must see according to his agreement with God, but he sees it thoroughly. Light means light, dark means dark. And everyone else sees and believes only what is shown to them. Только то, что показывают.